Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are visiting the city of Czechanowicz on the northeastern side of Poland and the Krzysztof Kluka Museum of Agriculture. They are organizing a medieval fair, or rather an event focusing on the lifestyle of the nobilities during the 18th century. Join us as we delve into the various aspects of the Polish nobility's life during the time when Poland was under partition. So ladies and gentlemen, today we are here with Mr. Kotkovich, dressed as a Polish nobleman from the 18th century. I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit about what role the Polish nobles played during the 18th century on the military aspect. The nobility derives from the class of knights, so it was obliged to military service. As they were a privileged group, they would perform military duties in exchange for having bestowed land. They would go on military exhibitions with cavalry soldiers, also called pochet, usually in groups of two or three. Although it had already been through changes, the nobility in the 16th and 17th century continued its military nature. For the children, there were lessons in wielding weapons and horseback riding. This was the basis of education for every nobleman, and they were the ones mainly recruited in the Polish armed forces, especially in the period when there was not a regular army in Poland, but only small movements. They consisted of noble brothers summoned from several lands threatened by an armed conflict. With time, of course, things changed. The nobility was more and more concerned with the management of their assets. They stepped away from active military service. Still, in the 18th century, the most common career path for the nobility was to enter into priesthood or serve in the magnate courts and court militias or in the crown of the Kingdom of Poland's army. Most of the Polish cavalry, this famous hussar which dominated the war fields of this part of Europe in the second half of the 16th century, as well as in the 17th century, originated mainly from the nobility and from the more affluent nobility who could afford the equipment and weapons. As you know, the hussars had to go to war in the correct gear. They had a cuirass, lobster-tailed pot helmet, they had to have enough lances, battle horses. All of these were very expensive. Only the wealthy nobles could afford it. With time, however, especially in the 18th century, we can observe the collapse of the art of war in Poland. The nobility also played a role as they blocked military reforms. This did not allow for the expansion of a permanent army subordinate to the king, fearing that he would use this army against the nobility to limit their state privileges. Hence, in the 18th century, a small permanent army and a popular offensive remains the basis of the armed forces of Poland. This ultimately determines its weakness. Even when the Polish army decides to reform and adopt Western patterns, it still cultivates the habits and traditions of making the cavalry be the core of the Polish army. This set them apart from other European armies of this period, which decided for the artillery and infantry to be the core of their armies. This also affected the wars waged in the 18th century, including the war for Polish succession in the Bar Confederation, or the wars in 1792 or 1794. <laughs> The Polish nobility had more influence on his country's politics than any other noble class in Europe. Next up, we will ask an employee of the museum, Mr. Eric Kutkowicz, about the particular features of the so-called Polish Nobleman's Republic. All right, so we have just been talking about the military aspects of the Polish nobility, and I was wondering if we can go more into the political aspect and what roles the Polish noble played during the 18th century. Because as I understood, uh, the Polish nobility actually had an intricate role that is unique in all of Europe. And I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit about it. The system which prevailed in Poland is in fact unique and could not be observed in any other European country or more broadly in the world. In fact, pre-partition Poland can be referred to as the Republic of the Nobility. This is due to the fact that the nobility had a decisive voice when 
when it came to state rights, some of the prerogatives which belonged to the rulers in Western Europe, for example in the Kingdom of Prussia, Kingdom of France or the British Isles, were stripped from the king in a different way than in traditional hereditary monarchies because, as we know, Western Europe was mainly based on dynasties. The handover of power was as follows. The king died, long live the king. However, it was much different in Poland. Following the Jagiellon dynasty, the king was elected by the general nobility and they had the decisive voice for making this choice. They also demanded that the Polish rulers guarantee the nobility's existing privileges and make new promises which were to respect the state of the nobility. It was mainly them that made all the decisions. We should also speak of the Liberum Veto, which was very unique in Europe. This meant that at the same, one deputy and one representative of the nobility could break the whole debate by saying Liberum Veto, which meant I do not agree. Because of this, many sames, especially in the 17th and 18th century, did not take place. In many cases, they were simply ended, even if they were to introduce reforms which were very much needed for the country. Moreover, the system allowed for extending foreign influence and the interests of individual coterie and the nobility. This caused corruption to spread. Many deputies were bribed by more powerful representatives of the nobility or the so-called magnate, as well as by foreign courts. For example, for Russian court, the French court or the Habsburg monarchy. In the case of Hetman Tarnowski, the great crown hetman, he was outraged that his political opponents were paid to look after the Habsburg's interests, while he, being a hetman himself, did not receive such a salary. In the end, this system did not work as well as intended and was the cause of several petitions of our country. Despite the fact that the nobility contributed greatly to the fall of the First Republic, it will go down in history as, during the partitions, thanks to the nobility, we managed to preserve Polish customs, traditions and save them during the partitions. As we know, Poland in the 19th century was divided between three monarchies, the Prussian King Kingdom, the German Empire, the Habsburg monarchy and the Tsarist Empire. Oftentimes, the representatives of the noble state would deal with various repressions which were encountered following the participation in uprising, for cultivating the Polish culture and traditions, as well as opposing Russification. In the Podlasia region, where we are today, the Russification was quite strong and aggressive. The nobility, of which we have many neighbors, was responsible for upholding traditions, effects of which we see to this day. Polishness is very much respected here. <laughs>